guys, today's review is brought to you by Uppercut Deluxe. If you're not familiar with Uppercut Deluxe, they make premium grooming products, and my favorite is the matte pomade for your hair. Uh, if you wanna check out some of their stuff, we'll put a link to their website in the review. And we're also giving subscribers and viewers of the Surfboard Guide a code, which is Surfboard Guide 20, which will give you 20% off anything that's on their website. Thanks so much for Uppercut Deluxe for backing the Surfboard Guide. And it'd be really cool if you can check them out and purchase some of their products with our code, because they help support our show and keep bringing good reviews to you. Thanks so much. Today for the surfboard guide, we're gonna check out the Nautilus by Christensen Surfboards. So the Nautilus I've been riding is a stock 6.1 and it comes in at 6.1 by 20 and 1 8 by 2 and 9 16 And I'm gonna say it's roughly between 32 to 33 liters. Uh, there's no volume on the board and it's pretty hard to find some volume to some Christensen surfboards, which I kind of admire, it's kind of core. Cool. So, you know, it keeps you that kind of true feeling of a board because if I go back a while, there was no lot, like literage and volume all that stuff and you picked up boards, put them under your arm and you just felt it. So. Funnily enough, when I grabbed this, I actually ordered a 6.0. And then when I went to pick it, I'm like, oh, this is kind of a board I probably want with like another litre or two of foam. And the 6.0 felt like it would have been okay, but I ended up grabbing the 6.1 for a little bit more paddle power. And I kind of wanted it for some bigger and better ways, but we'll talk a bit more about that later. Looking over the Nautilus, um, it's outline. It's pretty performance. You know, it's got, it's got a sharp pointy nose, but it does hold a little bit of width through the outline. It does look like a long kind of big-ish fish. Um, and yeah, it's kind of got a bit of width through the front, holds its width. It's got a, a swallow in the rear and it still copes quite a bit of width under your rear foot. It doesn't get too narrow, but it's a lot narrower than say like the Christensen Fish or one of his other boards like that. Um, the rail, kind of like a mid rail, kind of um, it drops down a lot as it gets to the, the tail and it, it's a sharp kind of tapered rail as it comes to the back end. A lot of volume in the rail and the belly of the board, like the, the volume is in the belly of this board has a light little beak through the front end. But yeah, kind of a mid to kind of full rail, especially very full through that front kind of, um, you know, second quarter of the board, I guess you say. And then it does taper off to a really nice rail. What gets kind of interesting on the bottom, uh, again, it's hard to find details of boards online, but it feels like there's kind of maybe a single through the front, but it's very flat. And if it's single, it's not very deep. Maybe a V coming through the center, you can feel the string, stringer start to protrude a little bit and come up above the rail line. And that V goes through the whole way to the rear, but it feels like there's a double that comes off the back through here. But again, when you put like a, um, a ruler or something across there, the stringer line is higher than the rail line. So while there might be a double, there is a double going through the back through the fins there, the, um, the V is much more prominent. So it gives it a really nice rail to rail transition. It's gonna be very easy to surf off the back foot. And you can feel, see actually, it does drop away quite a bit here. And that V, that double almost kind of like the concave goes away and it becomes just a V through the tail. So it just water flows through really nicely. Gets a bit sticky up the front in flat and kind of slow water. But if the waves are good or there's a bit of push in the pocket, it's absolutely epic. And then you can feel it just kind of jet through the back and you can turn really easily and nicely off the back foot. Um, so I've been surfing the Nautilus. I've had this board for quite a while. So uh, you would have seen Uppercut, Legends at Uppercut Deluxe backed us to, to put this review together. Um, and I've had the board for like almost six months now. So when I originally got it, it was winter in Australia, all getting pretty solid swells. And it's something I kind of got as a semi step up. Um, and I was able to surf in some kind of conditions. And that's how I actually saw the board. A um, couple liters more than my short boards, um, a quad, a nice kind of straight rail line. I saw it as a semi step up. And my first few surfs were in waves overhead, kind of four or five foot, uh, maybe some kind of eight foot days. Thing was epic, uh, handles drops, it has enough kind of rocker and lift through the board to not get in trouble, not bog, it's not too flat. Um, but also it's not too rockery that, you know, we get some kind of big days, we get some really kind of slopey, kind of gentle rolling waves. Thing was absolutely epic. As I said, all the volume is in the belly, so it paddles really, really well. So it feels like a step up, like I have a, another 6.4 that I ride, that I kind of ride when it's kind of overhead. Felt like that, really good paddle power. Got into waves really nice and early and it did handle drops. And um, even though it does have a, a pretty straight rail outline, that V through the tail allows you to still get on the back foot and turn it really well. 
you know, um, when I first had it, we, we were having COVID lockdowns in New South Wales and Sydney, Australia, where I am, uh, and it was limited about surfing and stuff like that. Well, not so much surfing, but filming. It was really difficult to film when I initially wanted to put the review out, which was kind of a, a blessing in disguise. We're coming into like the summer months in Australia. We're getting kind of, you know, less than stellar conditions. Waves are still pretty fun, but they're not amazing. Um, so I've started surfing in some kind of summary, you know, we'll put some footage together, you know, kind of two to four foot onshore, kind of fun waves. Not when I would have originally grabbed the Nautilus, but it's actually what has really blown me away is how, um, how well the board surfs in. Probably not the best waves. Like I'm not gonna grab this as my like everyday groveler for like crappy little, you know, small waves that I'm trying to make the most of. But you'll see from the footage, we surf some rip bowls that are kind of like, you know, knee to head high, uh, onshore, pretty slopey, you know, a bit sloppy and slow at times. The Nautilus felt absolutely amazing. That really blew me away because originally I grabbed this as a step up for clean kind of southerly swells, you know, bigger waves, um, you know, clean waves where it does go really well. It does like a really clean face with, with water coming up the face of the way, I mean, wind coming up the face of waves, so offshore clean waves where the board isn't flat in the water. But it blew me away how well it surfed in, you know, summary conditions, which you'll see in some of the clips we put in. If anyone's familiar with the Nautilus, you might be familiar that it comes with a whole bunch of different fin setups. I've seen it as a thruster, I've seen it as a quad, I've seen it as a twin fin. I think I've even seen it with Bonza 3D and five fin setups, but I went with a quad. As I said, it was something I grabbed as a step up, but then surfing in kind of rip bowls and smaller, you know, fun kind of waves. I really like quads for those kind of waves. So there's two sets of fins I went to. While Captain Fin actually make a Christensen quad set, uh, I didn't get a hold of those, but I got two really cool sets from Futures that I would recommend. So the first is the Legacy F6. Um, yep, the Legacy F6 by Futures. Um, and they are like a medium sized quad, felt really good. What's actually interesting about the Legacy F6 quads is that the back, the rear fins are a symmetrical foil. So those that are familiar with fins, showing the Rob Machado here, the inside of the fin is normally flat, uh, or futures they do like the generation spirit which is a speed generating fin which have a little kind of a concave through the center these are flat on the front fins but the um the rear quads are completely symmetrical so similar to a center thruster fin so what that does it is normally a fin that you get when you have a lot of speed and you want to control speed but and that's what i got these at first of all was some bigger and better waves where i do have speed i'm not generating speed but what blew me away was actually how well they surfed in like i said less than stellar conditions two foot kind of onshore fun rip bowls this was my go-to all-round fin but i'd be silly checking out a board and not taking the opportunity to check out a few different fins the other fin set that i really liked was the rob machado quad set so you probably be familiar with them. we've checked them out in a few boards um they're really cool looking fin um they're the Rob Machado quads. Uh, and these were absolutely epic. I preferred these when waves were smaller. Um, like I said, the, the symmetrical foil of the F6 Legacy is kind of a speed controlling fin rather than generating. But these are a really fast fin. Um, when the waves were kind of two foot, and you'll see some clips, they kind of gave the board a little extra gear. Uh, they didn't feel like they were dragging and they were really, really fast. I thought the, um, the long, because it's kind of like a split keel, it's quite a lot of fin. I thought that kind of approach would give, make the board feel very, very long and a bit harder to turn, but it didn't at all. Really well designed, still give the board really nice pivot, but also gave it really nice drive and flow when the waves were, you know, onshore small or didn't have quite as much push. So these are two fin sets that I checked out by Futures and were both really good. But for an all round fin setup, uh, I thought the F6 Legacy quads were absolutely perfect.
is the Nautilus for? The Nautilus is for almost anyone. For a beginner through to an intermediate kind of surfer, uh, it's got lots of paddle power, easy to get in waves, very, very versatile. It likes, you know, full, long, bigger waves. It handles sucky drops. And, you know, while it has a pretty kind of, a lot of meat in the belly and really easy to paddle, um, that V off the tail makes it really easy to turn and very, very user friendly. For someone who's kind of like an intermediate through to advanced surfer, the, the Nautilus is, you know, its possibilities are kind of endless. You can get it from, you know, really short, order it custom, through to get it really long for bigger or point breaks or whatever. The thing is a whole bunch of fun. I love getting on it and kind of like standing up high, kind of getting like a bit of a mid-length, just kind of cruising. I enjoyed that maybe more than doing turns. But when I got a chance to throw it on rail, so to put that V onto a rail, this rail here loved being through the water and it felt really, really nice to turn through the water. Look. Overall, I've absolutely loved the Nautilus. It's going to be something that's been in my quiver for a long time. I might custom a few specials that you might see, uh, you know, in the coming months uh, on our Instagram. Um, absolutely loved it. Thanks so much to Onboard Store and Christensen Surfboards Australia, and especially Uppercut Deluxe for bringing the review together today. Look, I've absolutely loved it. I'm stoked to got to check it out, and hopefully you get a chance to check one out too. Thanks so much for watching.